Hello, my energetic students. Welcome back to Noodle Chopstick series. And I have spoken earlier also that the name comes from the two methods that you have when you try to solve a problem. One is the noodle way, which is very, very messed up, complicated, or the chopstick way, which is a straightforward method. You go straight line from point A to point B. It is so, so, so easy to understand, so, so easy to solve. And because of this, I've named this series as Noodle Chopstick series. Now, my, my personal preference is chopstick. But but some people use noodle method, even though it's very confusing, it is lengthy, it is error prone, and it is difficult to grasp. But then still they use it. I don't know. I have two theories for that. I don't know. Maybe these are right or may not be right. But I always think that there are teachers who learned it that way. And they don't know there, there are simple methods out there. Or maybe they want to show that it's a rocket science. If you had not come to my class, you would have never learned it. Whatever it is, I don't know, but we'll, we'll stick to the chopstick series. So my name is Bhavdeep Sethi. I've done masters from IIT Bombay and I have a passion to teach physics. I convert physics haters to physics lovers. I always say never memorize physics, learn it with the nature around you. So today we are going to talk about one of the things that is very close to my heart and little history about it. When I was a child, I was told that the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi R square. So let, let's actually write them down. So as a child, when I was in school, I was told, okay, Bhavdeep, memorize that the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi R square. And the same teachers told me, memorize that the volume is 4 by 3 pi R cube. Okay, straightforward formula. I don't think there's any challenge in memorizing this, but as a curious child, I was curious. I mean, what is it about 4 pi R square? First of all, my curiosity about circle was you know, satisfied because I learned why the circle area was pi r square. That part I was clear. What I was not clear about is a sphere because, I mean, what is it about this number four? So what I did is I, I took a sphere of radius r and then I took sheets of paper. I cut circles of radius r and tried to glue them. It didn't work. Obviously, the shape is all, you know, the paper is wrinkled and all that. It didn't work. I mean, I... I I was really like, like curious. I mean, what is it about this number four? Why not 3.9? Why not 4.12? What is it like exactly four? And similarly, same curiosity, like what is it about four by three pi r cube? And no one was able to explain me. And the reason was because I had not learned calculus those days. And once I learned calculus, I saw how easy it is. I mean, three or four lines, you get the answer. Why is it four pi r square, four by three pi r cube? That's what we learned today. To start with, let's let's do a little prerequisite and I'm not teaching you calculus. You have to refer to my other videos. If you have not done calculus course, refer to other videos. This is just a refresher kind of thing. So if you have integration of x to the power n, where n is any number with respect to x, this is equal to x to the power n plus 1. See how we increase the power there and then we divide by this. Why is it so? Look at my other videos. For example, let's say x to the power 5. So x to the power 5, as in n is 5 here. So what you do is x to the power n plus 1. n was 5. So 5 plus 1 over 5 plus 1. So the answer is x to the power 6 over 6. Just a quick refresh over there, right? So you see, see other videos. If, if you're not done calculus, then you have to refer to, to those videos. Now, we'll start with a very simple shape, which is a, a cylinder. Yeah, again, I was told the curved surface area is 2 pi rh. And as a curious child, I was like, why? So then when I learned calculus, it was so easy because what I do now is, let's take a tiny strip here. So this is a tiny strip all around the cylinder here. And let's say the thickness is dx. And because we are doing calculus, the, the usual way is saying, okay, at a distance of x. But in this case, it doesn't matter. Still, I'll take at a distance of x, that's strip of dx. And let's try to find the area of this strip. Now, if you cut this strip, it's a long rectangle whose width is dx and how much is the length? The length is the entire circumference there, which is 2 pi r. So what you will end up getting is a strip here with the thickness of dx and the length of 2 pi r where r is the radius of this cylinder because if you cut it, it's... So how much is the area of this strip? It is 2 pi r times dx. It's just a rectangle. So Eureka, I have found the area of this rectangular strip. 
but no that that that's not what i wanted i wanted the the entire thingy here but that's okay i can find this area then this area then this area all these infinite many areas but that means integration so what do i integrate i integrate this area which is 2 pi r dx and that's it so 2 pi r is a constant it comes out so there are two ways to look at it so 2 pi r comes out and then you are integrating dx and and you can say okay dx is the thickness of this so this thickness this thickness this this this, this the entire things thing adds up to h so this integration of dx means tiny little things added together that is h to 2 pi r h we are done but let's say you are like purely into calculus so you can write this dx as x to the power 0 dx right and then you put the limits x starts from 0 to h 0 to h maybe maybe you just want to do mathematically so 2 pi r then x to the power 0 so x to the power 0 plus 1 that is x over 1 so x and then you put the limits 0 to h so you put h that is h minus 0 so that is h so 2 pi r h so that that's that's good i mean i have i was able to find the the surface area the curved surface area of a cylinder but then what about sphere sphere is similar so if you think about sphere isn't sphere also all these tiny little strips but 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 these the the thing is getting thinner and thinner the radius is not same here if you think about all these strips had a radius of r the same r now you can visualize this thingy as the r is decreasing so it was r here then less 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 at this point r is zero so you can't do sim same thing but you can do similar things so let's start doing that let's find the surface area of that so to do that let, let me draw some lines here maybe so i'm going to draw this vertical line and this horizontal line so now think about there's a strip here there's a strip here there's a strip here all these strips they have different radii so let's let's take one of them so the way to do that would be okay what if at at some angle theta some angle theta let's write it there that this this angle is theta at an angle of theta here i take a strip which is let, let's mark it with a blue color maybe so this is the strip that we are talking about uh, i would make it a little thicker so that we can see it's working but but honestly this is so thin infinitesimally small thin so what we are saying is at an angle of theta let's take a strip which subtends an angle of d theta so this angle is d theta so this angle is d theta it's it's very thin very very thin so now if i'm able to find this area i can do integrations i can integrate from here to here or from here to here we will see but first let's let's find out this this strip in order to find that strip i need the width of that and the radius the radius radius is so easy because if you know little trigonometry if you know little trigonometry you think about i'll use another color here maybe a green color so so let's say if you think about this i mean whether you start from here here doesn't matter because this is so small now isn't that the radius of that if this angle is theta this angle is also theta they that's an alternate angle if this angle is theta if this angle is theta and the radius is r uppercase r then this is r cos theta see this theta this is adjacent this is hypotenuse so so i can write here that this radius is r cos theta r cos theta and how thick is this you know angle is equal to radius times so let's let's write it down here so what is the definition of angle definition of angle is arc length over the radius so if you have a circle here so basically what is this angle theta this angle theta is this arc length over the radius so this angle d theta so i can write d theta is equal to this arc length which is the dx let's call this the dx right so dx that dx 
divided by divided by r see this angle theta is this thingy which is dx divided by radius so now if i open this strip and pull it aside as a rectangle what am i getting what i'm getting is a long rectangle here with thickness of dx but dx in terms of theta is r d theta because everything i would like to keep in terms of theta so that dx is r d theta so i'm saying this width is r d theta and how big this is this is 2 pi times the radius but radius is r cos theta so this is 2 pi r cos theta wow got it so now what is the area of this blue strip the area of the blue strip is 2 pi r cos theta 2 pi r cos theta times r d theta okay that's good so then then the area is 2 pi r times r is r square cos theta d theta okay so i was able to find the strips area but not something i wanted to find i wanted to find the whole of this but that's okay i can say okay this plus the other strip the other strip the other strip all these strips together that's integration so you integrate so what do you integrate integrate this area now what are the limits limits of theta theta starts honestly it starts from negative pi by 2 to positive pi by 2 if that you find challenging then you can say theta starts from 0 degrees here to 90 degrees or pi by 2 so 0 to pi by 2 you find this hemisphere then you make it double it's one and the same thing let's do that so theta starts from 0 to pi by 2 you find the upper surface area then you double that so you say 0 to pi by 2 and n times 2 because that's just half of it so 2 times 2 pi r square that's all constant i can pull it out so 2 pi r square and then integration of from 0 to pi by 2 obviously that limit has to be there cos theta with respect to theta now if you have done a little calculus course integration of cos theta is sin theta so 4 pi r square and then you get sin theta from 0 to pi by 2 now sin of pi by 2 is 1 sine of 0 is 0 there you have so this is 1 minus 0 which is 1 so you got 4 pi r square look at the number of lines here the three or four lines and that's how you should always use calculus for any of your curiosity i, I always say calculus is the language of physics it's not just the math it's actually it's more specifically calculus if you have understood that we can go and find the volume what is it about volume i mean volume is the whole of the material contained inside the the sphere and again my curiosity is always why is it 4 by 3 pi r cube okay so let's do this i mean if if you think about this this thingy can i think about the solid sphere being made up of shells you understand shell it's a hollow sphere so i can imagine so let, let's start drawing that so if i have a circle tool here maybe and i can I, I think i can draw a circle here yeah that's possible so i'm drawing a circle oh that's that's white color i wanted a blue color here so let's let's change that so again i'll draw a circle there with a blue color and if that's a shell here uh, i think that's not centered when I mean, this one is centered yeah this this looks cool so now what I'm saying here is, let's imagine that this, this is made up of all these tiny hollow shells. So let's say this shell is so thin that its thickness is dx. Its thickness is the dx. And the radius is, let's say, x. If I'm able to find the volume of this, how do I find the volume of this? Volume of this will be the surface area times the thickness and again these are the things you refer to my other videos there are a lot of videos i keep making on these concepts so that surface area times the dx is the volume of this so if i am able to find the volume of this shell i can integrate all this because i can find the this shell plus this shell plus this shell plus this shell 
and and it's going to be integration of that thingy with 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 limit of x being zero to r. So let's let's start with this. So how much is the volume of this shell? The volume of this shell is the surface area, which is four pi x square. That's the surface area times the thickness, which is dx. That is the volume of this shell. But I don't want that shell. I want the whole thing. So then I can say, oh, one shell, two shell, three shell, infinite many shells with different radii. The radii changes. This x is changing. So I'll say, okay, I need integration of all that with respect to x. So what's the limit of x? x started with a value of 0 and it goes all the way to r. So 0 to r. Okay, now 4 pi is a constant. You pull it out and then you do integration of 0 to r of x square dx. Now we have done this at the beginning of this class. x square is x to the power n. So, so what will be the integration of x square? It will be x cubed over 3. So 4 pi x cubed over 3 and then you put the limits of 0 to r. So once you put r, then put minus sign, and then you put 0. So this is 4 pi, then r cubed over 3, minus 0 over 3, 0 cubed over 3, to be more specific. So there you have 4 by 3 pi r cubed, and that is 1, 2, 3, 4 lines. And this is how you do any derivation. Calculus is the way to go. So wasn't that very easy? I'll keep bringing more such videos. You share these videos. And if you want to join my paid course, it's it's module three that has been launched recently. So our NSCP course actually is divided into five modules. We completed module two in April and then May 16th, we started a new module. And don't worry, even if you join this now, you can still catch up because these recordings will be provided plus whatever were the missing topics, I'm going to cover those also. So this is the module three and the prices are very, very cheap. And I can show that. So first of all, the class timings are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 to 7.30 p.m. Uh, 16 May, the classes started and there is a study break. Some students have uh, other engagements and we have given one week of break right now. And that's actually a study break. I've given a lot of homework and all that. So module three price is only 2,500 minus 10% off with this coupon. You apply a coupon of VS Pro 1, you get 10% off. So you save 250 rupees. A better deal is to buy three, four, and five. So there are three modules, three, four, five. You can get thousand rupees discount, but then in addition you get ten percent off. So first of all you're getting thousand rupees off plus ten percent off. So you save six fifty of that. Total is five five eight five zero. And and then then you also get the recordings of all the previous modules. You get doubt clearing on Telegram group. It's not a channel. It's a group. Then you get test on Sundays. Then you get assignments after each class. So if there's a class on Monday, you get assignment after that. Wednesday, you get assignment after that. So a lot of things um, over there. So join this. And in addition, there is a webinar for parents that's coming up. So the link is down there. Uh, you register on that Google form and we'll invite you for that webinar. So seats are very limited because it's going to be a uh, limited parents only. I, I just want to focus and guide a limited set of parents. So if you want to join that, fill the form description given below so it's a google form if you fill that i'll send you the invite and the webinar is most probably around 29th of may it's for parents you can also join but it's for guiding the parents because many parents come to me and say what is the use of olympiad and i want to educate them how olympiad fits in the journey of jwe so that's the theme of the or the session please encourage your parents to join so register down on the link below now if you need any help uh, Ayus is the person to contact, so he's going to help you. Now, I'm always proud to show the picture of Dhruv Shah. He was our student, Vedantu student, and he got a gold medal along with the team, Team India. He was part of Team India, and he got a physics gold medal in International Olympiad. Similarly, Aditya Navneesh, they got a silver medal in Chemistry Olympiad, International. Okay. So I'll see you soon, and keep up the high Josh students. And Good luck.